Heavenly Father, we do thank you for such a beautiful day, and, and we thank you for the privilege that we have to, to come together in love and to share in fellowship. And, and Father, we're just appreciative that you have blessed this country with the freedom of religion and, and that we can come together without fear of, of, of any kind of aggression towards us. And we just ask that you would keep us protected that way, Lord, and, and bless this country. Be with us during this time of the election, which is a, a very controversial thing right now. And, and we just know that you're in control and and you have a plan, and, and Father, we, we trust that, and we put our faith in that, and so it doesn't matter what happens, uh, although we have, we have our, our preferences, but, but we know that you're in control, and that's, that's primary. Help us to understand how to study the Bible so that we can have a closer relationship with you and have a more intimate relationship with you, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you for these people that that are contributing to that. And and we will help each other, Lord, and to, to help each other grow in and, and sanctification process. And, and, and we, we just thank you for all that you are, Lord. And we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments? Anybody before we get started? Okay, good. No complaints. Okay. I like that. So, we're talking about interpretation, and we're going to finish that up tonight. And before I say that, everybody got the, uh, yeah, because I've talked to all of y'all, and I know. I've gotten answers back from most of you, and I'll get them, and we'll talk about that later about the method of Bible study. So we've got to talk about that a little bit and sort some things out. So we'll do that as soon as we finish up with interpretation. Don't have a whole lot left to talk about that. I think we, uh, we, 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 we talked about it a good bit. But first of all, there are, there are sources of interpretation. And the Bible's been around for, for many years, and parts of it for as long as 4,000 years. Uh, to understand what the authors are trying to communicate their meaning to us, it's, it's important to, to understand the circumstances in which they live. And, and how they're influenced by their culture, the history of their culture, the geographic stuff. We talked about that last week. Um, to do that, there's a, at least four gaps that we have to fill in to be able to in, rightly interpret what we're studying, okay? Um, we got to remember that None of the biblical authors spoke with Pennsylvania Dutch slogans. None of them had a southern accent. And, and, and we, there's a language barrier, okay, um, between us and them. And so that's the first thing we have to understand is, is the language gap. And there's, there's, a, there's four language, four gaps that we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, and the language is the first one. We talked about that before, um, talking about looking up words in the Greek or the Hebrew, and also looking at the context of how that word is used in that verse or in that pericope, maybe in that paragraph, it, because it's different. They use different words or the same word but has different meaning, okay? So it's important to have a resource that you can look at that will give you all of those different meanings. Hey, Matt, go in. And so um, we're talking about the language gap. Uh, there's, there's, there's four gaps that you have to 
to do that, to, to be able to correctly interpret uh, what you're what you're studying, whether it's the Bible uh, chapter, the Bible book, or a verse, or a topic, or whatever. It's it, you have to interpret it. You have to to understand these gaps and put put these things together so that you get a correct interpretation of what the author is trying to communicate to uh, in his writing. Okay. Um, so the language gap is, is the, the first one. And the second gap is the cultural gap. I want to read uh, from John MacArthur. He, I like how he explains something. It may, makes a lot of sense to me. He says that the cultural gap must be bridged because cultures can be very different. If we don't understand the culture of the time in which the Bible was written, we'll never understand its meaning. For example, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, from John 1.1. Now what does that mean? Why didn't he say in the beginning was Jesus? Well, he used the word because that was the vernacular at that time. So to the Greeks, the term word was used to refer to a kind of ethereal spatial energy that was floating around. And John said to the Greeks that this floating cause, this thing that caused everything, that spatial energy, that cosmic power, is none other than the word that became flesh in verse 114. So to the Jew, the term word was always the manifestation of God because the word of the Lord was always God emanating his personality. So when John said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, he was identifying Jesus Christ, the incarnate Christ, as the very emanation of God. In the text, therefore, he meets both the Greek and the Hebrew mind with the right word that each can identify with at, at vital points. That made sense to me. I had never read that or heard that before. And I've, I've always liked John 1. I, I, I've always liked that verse of Scripture, you know? And, and, and so when I read this by John MacArthur, it just made perfect sense because it, it just, that, that's how John was communicating to the people, okay? And they, they got it. They understood that in that way. And I want to understand it that in that way, okay? And I have my own way of understanding it in addition to that. And so I can, now that, that I have experienced the resurrected Jesus Christ, I experience that differently, okay? And so I can, I can add a plus to it, okay? And that makes sense to me. So that's the second gap. The third gap is the geography gap. And I've drawn a map up here. That's not, please don't laugh at me. That's, that, I'm not, I don't claim to be an artist, but that's the map of Israel, in case you didn't recognize that. <laughs> of course, it has Jerusalem and Nazareth in there and all that. It, it, you can figure that out, but that's a map of Israel. And the reason I wanted to, to, to talk about that in the context of talking about the geography gap was in our Sunday school class the last couple of weeks, this made a difference in how I understood a question that came up in class. And we spent two weeks talking about it. The, the question was, what, how many, 
how is what are the degrees of punishment in hell? Okay. Well, we had a verse of scripture, I think it was Luke 10, chapter, verse 2, and I forgot my Bible, and I, I hate that. I left in a hurry tonight, and I, I left my Bible on the desk. Um, somebody, somebody read that. Was it 10 to Barry or 210? 10 to, I think. And, and Matthew, I think it was 10, was it 10, 12? Maybe, Luke 10, 12, I think it was. Yeah. Read, read that. Uh, my phone is dead. Let's <laughs> see, you can't look at the Bible there either. <laughs> and, and you're in sorry shape. Yeah, double whammy. I don't know if this is what you were looking for. It says, I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Okay. So he's comparing, saying, and, and, and so here's where geography comes in. Okay. Jesus, Jesus was born in Nazareth. The majority, I don't need it now. I've got two teachers now. Us here in this region, this is where Peter and Paul and, and, and John and all those, a lot of those uh, disciples were born up in this area. Okay? In this area, this is the uh, Genesaret where the, uh, he, he healed that. Uh, a guy with the uh, took the demons. I forget how many legions of demons out of him, and put them into pigs, and they ran off into the into the water. And and he he did a lot of miracles. This is where he had up in this area is where he fed the five thousand. Actually, it was probably about ten thousand because it was five thousand men, and they had their families with them. So you're looking at a woman and and two or three kids probably. So you're looking at probably around 10,000 people that he fed with a few loaves and fishes. And that was up in this area. And so what he's saying is, what have I got to show you? What, what have I got to do if you don't believe, and, and I've done all this, and you don't believe me, it will be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for you. That's how I'm interpreting that. And it makes sense to me. Because he he performed a lot of miracles up in that area. Okay? If he did that in our era, in our area, and people didn't believe him, we would go, are they nuts? <laughs> We'd say that now, because why would someone not believe Jesus Christ, given all that we know about him, that, and it's historical, okay? It isn't just myth. It's not a fantasy. It's not a, it's not a Disney World story. Jesus Christ lived and died and was resurrected, and there's witnesses, you know? And I'm going to read one when we get to the gap of history, which is next. And, and I'm going to read some stuff from Josephus, okay? But this is how we... We can understand the scriptures better and deeper through when we look at maps and geography when, when we get to that because it's important. And mix that with the culture, it's all combined. We, we combine all of that when we're doing our study so that we, I study systems, okay? And within systems, there's a lot of different parts to systems. I want to know what those different parts are in that system that makes the system work. Because you've heard that the, some of the parts are greater than the whole, okay? And that's why, because, and even the Bible talks about that. And, it, and it, that's who we are as human beings. We have a lot of different parts to ourselves. There's part of me sometimes that thinks like this, and sometimes I think like that. 
or I want to do this, but part of me don't want to do that. I'd really prefer to do this, and I'm kind of confused and frustrated. I'm not quite sure what decision I'm going to make. And that's because there's so many different parts of ourselves, okay? And, and Christ talks about that in the New Testament. So the geography gap, Matthew 10, 15, that, that's the word. Read that, uh, Barry. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. That punctuates the same thing that we were just talking about. And so, um, any questions about about that? About the geography gap? I've never considered that before in my studies, to be quite honest. I've never thought about it before. And I do understand it, especially since that happened in our Sunday school course. It, it, it just punctuated to me the importance of understanding that that dynamic of, of where things happen. Who was the Luke, first verse, Luke 10, yeah. 12? It was Matthew or Luke? Luke 10, 12 was the first one. Okay. okay. And then Matthew 10, 15. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I was wondering, I didn't have the same thing you did, but yeah. that's all right. <laughs> you can, you can work. <laughs> Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Yeah. Dan, in the, in the context of that verse, if you read above it, um, are preachers to wipe their feet off it? A church in town, <laughs> except I mean I, I thought of that literally of, of waving my feet and when I left and you know nobody would understand it if they didn't think of that. But you know if you've tried and tried and tried and and you just can't get through to these people and yeah. they want to keep their small yeah. little church and they don't yeah. want to reach people for Christ, shouldn't we just say <laughs> goodbye and wave yeah. our feet and I mean. Shouldn't preachers do that? I don't know. Yeah, in, in that area, in that in that northern <laughs> in that northern region of Israel, this is another dynamic. Gnosticism was very powerful in this region at that time. Okay, and so Gnostics are very kind of know it allish. They they already got the answers to everything. You, I don't care what it is, they know it. All you have to do is ask them, you know? And they, they, they can tell you what, what is. And so they, those kinds of people, and I, we see that in people today that reject Jesus Christ because they reject that teaching, okay? And it, 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 it just, it's frustrating to see someone that you like, maybe a relative, and they just won't accept Jesus Christ. That is a frustrating process. Those of you who might have a relative that, that you're praying for, and you, you just, why? <laughs> so let me back up a second, because one of the things we got to remember and whenever you're studying, is to put down the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Okay? Because those are the questions that you need to answer before you can interpret a book, a verse, a paragraph, a pericope, whatever you're studying, before you can interpret anything you want to be able to answer those questions, okay? Who, what, when, where, why, and how, okay? Romans 1.20 says, to punctuate what we were just talking about in the, the, the geographical uh, uh, interpretation, it says, Romans 1.20 says, 
For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Look at nature. He walked on the water. <laughs> he calmed the storm. He just said, you know, be still. And it, the storm stopped. He had the power. And these men saw it. And you think they didn't tell everybody about it? When they got to shore? You're darn right they did. They couldn't wait to, to, to tell it. You know? And so people knew who this man was. He had thousands of people that were following him around. And so there were people that were rejecting it though. And so he's saying that in Matthew, uh, what was it, 10, 15, and, and uh, Romans 1, 20. You're without excuse. You don't believe these things? You're without excuse. And you're going to hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions on geography? Yes. I, I wonder where it fits in with people who accepted Jesus, but they accept him where he fits into their life. Yes. Are they really saved? You know. <laughs> you well, know. It, that's a good <laughs> question, and that's a question God's going to have to answer. Yeah. You know, I, I can't judge. But don't that. you don't you wonder sometimes? Oh yeah. Do they yeah. have they really made a commitment? Oh yeah. I, I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm preparing a message right now, <laughs> and for the men's group. I'm taking it from, uh, not, not too long ago, I talked about worldliness versus the, f the flesh versus the spirit, okay? Well, I don't think I got deep enough. So I'm going to talk about selfishness and self-denial because we are very selfish people. You are... I am, mm -hmm. when I compare myself to the principles in the New Testament, I am a very selfish individual. Yeah. And I, I apologize, and I, I repent of that. And, and I ask forgiveness. Because my selfishness gets in the way of my sanctification and my, not my love for God, I love God, okay? But I am a selfish person, and it, it, it interferes with my life, okay? And you are too, by the way, you know? Yeah. And so, um, any other comments? All right, the, the fourth gap is to understand, before we can interpret, is looking at the history. The gap of history. It says when you know the history behind a passage, that, that history will help you comprehend what the writer is trying to communicate to the people that he's writing to. Okay? And, and you know, these writers, they're human beings. <laughs> We're human beings. We all, we're no different. Sometimes there, there might be a few things in scripture where the culture or the, uh, would make a, make a little bit of difference, but not, not very often. Most of scripture is written, God, God designed what's going to be handed down to us. Okay? And so, um, history is critical. In, in history, I wanted to read... <laughs> yes? I had a professor when I was um, getting my bachelor's that said you can't...
study history without studying the Bible, and you can't study the Bible without studying history. I agree. Yeah. Huh. And how true it is. Yeah. I agree. The, uh, actually, when I look at the Bible, a vast majority of it is history. Exactly. It, it's, it, it's literally loaded with history. You can't separate history from the Bible. It's just there. But I don't always understand the historical context. Like sometimes I don't, I don't know what was going on at that time. So I do need a resource for it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's that. That's what, when, depending upon which method of study you're doing, but probably any one of the methods, you're going to want to co consolidate a little bit of history in there. You're going to want to know a little bit about that. Okay. <clears throat> When Christ was crucified, that, that's history. Well, let's look at what was happening in, in Israel and Jerusalem at that time. <coughs> so I went to uh, Josephus. Here's what Josephus had to say. But Pilate and when I read this, I hope you get out of it what I got out of it, because it made sense to me as to God is in charge of things. God makes things happen. <laughs> and he controls people and situations and circumstances, and he sets things up. That's why when we pray for something, Sometimes it takes a while for that prayer to get answered because he may, he hadn't forgotten about it. He just has to maybe make some things happen to make that happen. And, and I look back on my life, I'm an old man, and I can look back on my life and see things that I've prayed for that, that came about much later after I'd almost given up on it. God didn't give up on it. Okay, and I see that, and when I went back and I realized this even more powerfully when I went back and read Josephus, and I want to read this to you, what Josephus wrote. Now, Josephus, for those of you who don't know who he is, he was, he was a Roman soldier who was injured, okay, and he... He became very interested in Israel, the nation of Israel, and he wanted to write a history about, about them because the Jewish nation of Israel had a very interesting story, okay? When you look at the, the history of Israel and coming from Egypt out of slavery and coming into the promised land and fighting the Nephilim and overcoming them and Jericho and the walls falling down and, and beating the Nephilim. There's a lot of history there. And so Josephus became very interested in that. He was a historian and, and, and so he wrote, he wanted to write about the history of Israel. He just happened to be alive during the time of Jesus. I'm sure, you know, it ain't no, God put him there at a certain time and place. Here's what he wrote. But Pilate undertook to bring a current of water to Jerusalem and did it with the sacred money and derived the origin of the stream from the distance of 200 furlongs. Now, some of the language in this, I, I didn't understand some of it, but I got the gist of what he's saying. And I think you will too, if you don't get caught up into the, the, the terminology and the verbiage that he uses. Because this is written, uh, what, 2,000 years ago, okay? So however, the Jews were not pleased with what had been done about this war. And many, ten thousands of the people of the Jews got together and made a clamor against him 
and insisted that he should leave off that design. Now, I didn't read the part where Pilate wrote about how, I mean, Josephus wrote about how Pilate came to be in charge of the, the area at the time he did, okay? It was he, he was in the Roman army. I didn't, I didn't do that. I wish I'd done a little bit of that. But just so you know, he hadn't been, Pilate had not been over this area very long. And so he, there was a water problem. And so he, he going to take care of it. Well, the Jews didn't like how he took care of it. And their, their raise had came. Pilate had already gotten into trouble with Rome. Okay, so now he's afraid to lose his position in Jerusalem. Okay, and so some of them also used reproaches and abused the man as crowds of such people usually do. So he habited a great number of his soldiers in their habit who carried daggers under their garments. So he gets a bunch of his soldiers and he put his chair out in the middle and he put his soldiers all around him. And they unarmed, but they had daggers underneath their cloaks. So they, they looked like they were unarmed. So the Jews would come in to have a meeting with Pilate. Okay? And so... He sent them to a place where they might surround them. So he bade the Jews himself to go away, but they boldly casting reproaches upon him, he gave the soldiers that signal which had been beforehand agreed upon, who laid upon them much greater blows than Pilate had commanded them, and equally punished those that were tumultuous, and those that were not, nor did they spare them in the least. And since the people were unarmed and were caught by men prepared for what they were about, there were a great number of them slain by this means, and others of them ran away wounded, and thus an end was put to this sedition." He had his soldiers kill a lot of these 10,000 men and who weren't killed, a lot of them were wounded and they ran away and Pilate won the argument. <laughs> but he's still in trouble because that could get back to Rome. Now, there was about this time a man named Jesus and if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to them both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Messiah. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men amongst us had condemned him to the cross. Those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct to this day. That is a secular historian writing. Not only Josephus, but numerous other historians from that time wrote about the same stuff. That's history. That's secular history. Okay? We have history in our Bible. But that just punctuates the history that's in the Bible. Okay, so Pilate had to give in to crucifying Jesus because of the circumstances. He had to protect his career. So he washed his hands of it because, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a, 
Oh, I crossed my fingers. Let me uncross them. I mean, these guys are superstitious and they're, they don't have the same value system as, as we do as Christians. Okay? You know people like that today. You know? They're, they're very superstitious or, or uh, they just put their faith in something other than their hope in something other than Jesus Christ. Okay? And so do we. We put our hope sometimes in things that other than Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's why we're selfish. Because <laughs> we do that. All right? So, those are the gaps. And that's the thing about interpretation. I want to talk about the Bible study methods because we have to. Yes. I have a question for you. Yeah. You had said there was four gaps, and I only have three: language, cultural, and historical. Geography. Language, geography. cultural, geography, yeah. and history. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And there, there are some other things that are about interpretation. <coughs> I want to go into uh, we might get into them somewhat as we're doing a, a study like literal translation that, that's pretty normal whenever you read something and you just take it literally okay some things you can take literally and some things you can't you need to delve in you need to jump in the deep end okay especially depending upon your questions about things because when you're reading scripture, you should remember you want to keep a notebook beside you and have questions as you're reading. You read something and you, you come up with a question in your mind and you want to write it down because it will escape you. It does. Be, I, I, oh, I'll never forget that. I'll be all right. And then 15 minutes later, what was I thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> And so write it down. So I have about three or four composition notebooks on my excuse me on my desk now, and um, so I have to look through all of them because I'm ADHD and sometimes I write the wrong question in the wrong composition book. So, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm not that organized, but that's Cindy's strength, and she keeps helps keep me straight a little bit. That's what brought us together. So. Any questions, comments about what we talked about? Yeah, man. Here's something interesting. And when you get into the Bible, lineage is extremely important to understand. And here's what's interesting. People miss this passage in Matthew. In verse 6, Jesus specifically says to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, who is the house of Israel? Does anybody know? The house of Israel goes back to Genesis 48 when uh, Jacob, who was renamed Israel, adopted Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and said, my name shall be upon their descendants. He then, in 49, gives the birthright, which was the scepter and the right to rule, which Christ came through, on Judah. And said that the brothers, the descendants of those brothers, would carry their brother's name, Judah. So what you have is, you have this group of people. Why was their tension between the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And why do you see this play out today? Because when you go to the book of Hosea, God divorced the house of Israel. He said, you're not my God, I'm not your people, which made them Gentiles. This was the tension. What they were actually doing was they were going to the remnant of the house of Israel to proclaim the gospel. And naturally, Jews and the, these people, which a lot of them were Samaritans, did not get along. 
And, and that's the context here. Okay. It, it's an interesting context to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And it, it involves history, it involves a culture, it involves characters, it, you know, there's, there's a lot to that that you yeah. have to look at. Um, that would be, the House of Israel would be an interesting study. It would be an interesting topic to study. But let's talk about the Bible study methods. Um, I've got, I've got Daphne, Dave and Faith, Barry and Junie, and Pat. Um, any other What you want to study? Give me a, one you're thinking about. First by verse analysis mode. <laughs> first by verse analysis method. The verse analysis method? Yeah, first by verse analysis method, number 12. My mind was elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> so, awesome. How about you, Jan? Well, I wasn't here last week for that, but I did see it You're in the study. You <laughs> <don't think laughs> <that. laughs> I was busy doing the other stuff. Do you have a, yeah, any, any particular one of those stand out for you? Well, you, Liz, and I was just looking. Well, I definitely don't want two. Huh? <laughs> I definitely don't want two. <laughs> You don't want to do <laughs> chapter summary yeah. uh, Well, eventually you'll have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an eight either. <laughs> you like, did you say eight? See, that, eight that wasn't an eight either. <laughs> One that they don't have is the word by word by Dr. Dubinsky. <laughs> well, it's a tough choice, I know it is. What do you think, Liz? I don't know. Shirley? Three. Three? <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a good one. How about seven? Seven? You say seven, seven little words. Said, yeah, I said seven. You said seven? Yeah. And then she said that's one she picked. <laughs> oh, okay. One of the ones. One of the ones. <clears throat> so everybody picked a different one. <laughs> yeah. He's going to he's gonna do them all. We're going to do them all. I don't think it matters. <laughs> Shirley, what character quality do you want to get? <laughs> you can just continue on with it. <laughs> or didn't you pick one? I haven't picked one yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we might have to pick unselfishness. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you pick one? No, I didn't pick one. I'll take three, two. What did you say, Liz? I'm three. sorry. Three. She's taken three, two, yeah. Character. Okay. I make that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to look these over. Because that eliminated the fact that you've chosen some out of the 12. Some are not within that pick. And so I want to look at the ones that you picked. And I reserve the right to decide. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Are you in agreement with that? Sure. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. I don't think we had a choice. How about yeah. people? <laughs> Should we take a vote? How about the people on the line? Have they okay, made any comments see. about that or picked any? Uh huh. <clears throat> Do you ask them? Oh, no. Uh. But they didn't comment on it. Matt, do you have a list? Do you have that listing? No, I don't have. You want one? Yeah, I'll take one. Okay. Yeah, and there's someone here who come normally, so they would have the list. Yeah, they should because <laughs> yeah. that one I sent to everybody. Yeah. So. There are some who come in person that are on here, so. That's what you said to us about finding a verse, a scripture. A hard, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Last week at the end of class, you said about finding a verse of scripture. And what was the purpose of that? <laughs> just to, to study, just to look at, and, uh, to read and have questions about. And, just meditate on it. Okay. Okay. When you meditate on it, and we've done some meditation, very simple meditation process, but hopefully as you practice that, it will grow. It will the the the, the strategy, the skill will improve as you as you practice it. Okay? And it takes practice on meditation because it, it just does it, because if you bump, get bombarded with the, all the external fault processes, and you have to learn how to manage that. That's the toughest part. And there's sometimes there's there's a style of meditation to where you allow that. You allow that external those external faults to to come in because and you just you just identify them and process them and some of them evaporate and some of them grow larger, okay? And that's good because then that creates insight, okay? And you want insight into yourself because this is the thing. When we're studying the Bible, it's about me and God. And I want insight into me. It's easy for me to get insight about Cindy. <laughs> right? You know what I mean. We, we, it's easy to figure what somebody else is about. But when we try to figure ourselves out, it's a little more complicated. That's why I say selfish is, is a good word to identify us. Okay, and so anyway, here's here's my dilemma, and I'm going to need your help to help me with my dilemma. I've never taught this class before. This is the first time I've ever taught a how to study the Bible class. All right, this is new territory, and so help me out. <laughs> Let's, let's make this a good class. And I need each of you to contribute to that. 
just as much as me. Okay? I've talked about some of the methods, et cetera, et cetera, and we'll, we'll still look at some strategies as we go along. Because what we I, what I hope will happen is if we when we take a particular method and use it in here, we're gonna help each other. And we're gonna learn from each other. Okay? And we're gonna grow because of it. Okay. And, and Are you so, gonna take like one meth like a method and everybody's gonna do that same method? That's what I'm thinking okay. about, Joni, but I, I, I'll be honest. There's part of me that wants to do that because I don't know any different. But there's a part of me that says maybe I would like to let each of you do your own thing and we talk about it. But I think that would get like, yeah. more like an atom and yeah. it would get too confusing. Mm -hmm. um, so I may have to come back to that uh, if you take one. Because we can get through all of them. And some of them, because I've found this to be true, some of them is we'll be we'll be doing two or three or two or at least a couple of them at a time. Okay. You just kind of do. Like especially in topic, topical studies, chapter studies, book studies you're going to incorporate some of the other methods as well. And, and, you know. But I think when, 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 you, when you identify which method you want, whether it be the character quality method or the biographical method, you may get mix a little bit in there, but you stick with the goal of the character quality method, because that's the one you want to complete. It's like a disease. With a disease, you have a lot of symptoms. Those symptoms might occur in a lot of other diseases, but this one disease is the one the doctor is going to be focused on, right, Pat? even though these symptoms occur in other illnesses. Same thing with mental health. You're going to narrow it down to the... Exactly. you got to do the differential diagnosis to be able to eliminate this particular disorder so that you narrow it down to it's got to be this one. That's called the differential diagnosis. And so that's a principle. And so we can use that principle in this class, I think, in, in, in this study. Okay? Any comments? Dan, nobody on here is answering me, so. <laughs> about nobody's answering me about Bible study methods they would like. Right. Okay. Nobody's I'll, answering. I've sent out an email anyway. To, I think it was pretty clear because I got an email right back. Okay. And I just had a question. Sorry. That uh, the handout went on a rec at the beginning of October, if that helps anybody on. That yeah, that, it was a little yeah. early. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So next week, be thinking about this and about in terms of the process of how we do this, okay? And I'll pick one of the methods. I'm gonna look through this and and, and pick a method. I, I want to pick one. Kind of easy to start with. Okay, I'll, I'll look through okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. We'll think of one hard. that's going to be easy to start with, and then we'll go from there. Okay. But be thinking about the process, and your I would like to hear your ideas about how we, that process would evolve and, and, and function. Okay. And we can we can turn this into something that can be very beneficial for all of us. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay? Because we all want to, the one thing that I was impressed with is almost every one of you talked about you wanted to improve your relationship with God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. That that's that's what this is about. You know? Is is it is growing that in sanctification, okay? And growing that relationship with God and getting closer. And and I can feel it in myself just in the short period of time that I've been doing this class. Okay. I can I've experienced it. And so I I, I feel good about this. Okay? Mm-hmm. Any comments, questions, concerns? I just had a question yeah. about your handout from the uh-huh. end of last week, the daily spiritual diary. Yeah. I missed last class, so I apologize. Yeah, I is- just handed that out in case for just when you're reading something and you want it, it's a good guide for, or, a, you know, it's a, 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 a sheet for you to write on. Okay. You know, but it has some structure to it uh-huh. to take notes. And you can use that any way you want to use it. You know, I mean, you don't have to stick to the template. You can you can ad- adapt or adjust the template to what best suits you with your style. Okay, but we do. You do want to know who, what, when, where, why, and how. That's the answer. At least some of the answers you want to you want to answer in your study. And not necessarily for the devotional method, but for the other methods you do. When you're reading just devotional, you just it's more literal, the literal interpretation, you're just reading straight through, you know, it's hard for me to do that anymore. I find myself going down a lot of rabbit holes when I'm studying because being able to so easily hover my mouse over <laughs> the, and it gives me that verse of scripture. Oh yeah, let me check that out. And I, here we go. You know? And, and so it, I have to, I have to, I have to use the strategies I teach for ADHD people. I have to re-engage that for myself because it's easy for me to lose focus and, and go down. That's something I'm trying to work with Sayla about right now. I gave her a pen. I said, I want you to take this pen and I want you to study it for just a minute. And then I'm going to ask you questions about it. (laughs) (laughs) What, what, What part's black and what part's gray? The bottom part, right? What's the writing on it about? What what what's the make of the pen? What kind of pen is it? And so forth. Now I I'd ask and I'd ask a lot of different questions because when you, it teaches you to focus, and that's what I'm trying to teach her because she's she's struggling with that at school a little bit. You know, she she's she's smart. And smart people get bored easily, and they lose focus. (laughs) And that's what's happening somewhat with her. And she doesn't like school. (laughs) Her her class, I'm sorry, I'm done. Her class picture just came back yesterday. I've got a picture of it on my phone because the look on her face. describes her attitude towards school. Cindy sent me a text when she got the picture and she, Cindy said, Cindy said, Sailor's school pics look like she feels about school. <laughs> it is definitely, it is, I love this picture. <laughs> She's a long way to go. <laughs> I enjoyed her. I observed the, the three to six grade. Uh, oh, last I enjoyed her because yeah. I never got to really communicate with her because she's usually very quiet. Yeah. She yeah, she she's, well, she's quiet, but she has her opinion. The it? wheels were turned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even in the nursing when I had her. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes the light's on, but nobody's hungry. 
do you think I should finish this? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, thank you guys for coming and be thinking about what we're going to do. How